Welcome to another herping video in Queensland. This one documents the first night of a very successful herping trip out to the Brigalow region. It was such a productive trip in fact that I had to split it into two videos, so hopefully you'll enjoy both. Let's get straight into the road cruising. Right, time to head out for the first night cruising. I've got to my little, set up my little camp spot. And now we're going to hit the road and see what we can find. It was a big drive to get here so there was no day herping as it was pretty much dark by the time I was heading out. But luckily we were straight onto some snakes. Well we've got the first snake on the road guys and the first snake of the trip. This one is a new species for me, this is Suta Dwyeri. The I believe it's called the Variable Black Naped Snake. Same genus as the Curl Snake, which are a lot better known and I believe more abundant but here there's plenty of records of these uh, Dwyer eye. Little lapids. Uh, can't speak on the toxicity of the venom, but of course they are. Being an lapid, they are a front fang venomous snake. And because this is the first one for me, uh, I'm going to grab a few pictures and uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you a bit of footage in a slightly more natural setting. Well, hopefully that shows you the snake a little better. There's a million flies here, as you can probably see, so I haven't taken long with photography. But interesting little snake, and a first to me. Very, very similar to the curl snake, like I say. Spend their time rummaging around on the floor. Not, a, not an arboreal snake at all. Looking for small skinks, geckos, things like that to eat. I'm not sure how that light comes out on the phone, but... Hopefully you can see the snake. A little bit better than it's not blowing it out but it's not the top target so we're going to continue and leave this one be not long after that suitor dwyer eye we've got suitor suitor the kill snake the other member of the suitor genus that you can find here that i was mentioning before uh, this one is a little bit smaller than the ones i was seeing around townsville area oh my god there's so many bugs here um, but again i feel like i've just spoken about them Stay on the ground, search around actively for prey such as skinks, geckos, and things like that. Another little front fang of lapid. And uh, the second snake of the night on the trip. Great stuff. I'm not going to do any photography with this one. I've seen one of these before. So uh, probably the last we'll see of this one. Not a snake this time, guys, but soon after those suitors, we've got this, which I believe is Paradelma orientalis. I believe it's called the Brigolo Scaly Foot. But I did see a few records of these on here, so that's very cool. Um, they're most closely related to geckos of all the lizards. And this is my first one. So again, let's take this one safely off the road, grab a few shots, and uh, we'll show you in a little bit more of a natural set. And really, really pale. There's a species of snake out here called a grey snake, which is a member of the Hemiaspis genus. And I thought that's what we're onto here, but it's not. It's one of these scaly foots. There we go. That's a more natural way to see them. Little legless lizards eat little invertebrates. You can tell, even if you weren't sure whether this was a snake or not, you can see just about here is where the body turns to the tail, so the, the cloaca will be there which is on a snake, you know, you find the cloaca down here somewhere. Um, and for that reason, they are, they can of course, autotomize and lose their tail. So you do have to be very careful if you were to handle this, it would be able to drop its tail just like any other gecko would. So that's something to be careful of. Quite interesting things. I'm really glad I've seen one. Uh, it's nice to have something not venomous actually for a change, although the main targets are of course all venomous. But it's, it's meaning making quite a productive road cruise. This is the third thing we've seen on the road. Um, and it's a third lifer for me. Actually, no, tell a lie. Second, I have seen kill snakes before, but yeah, it's going pretty well. I'm hoping this phone footage comes out. It's about as close as I can get my phone to focus, really. Really sort of paley grey-blue colour to the scales, but I can tell I'm waffling a bit now. So let's leave this one be and carry on the road cruise. These legless lizards are the sole member of the monotypic genus Paradelma, 
I mentioned that they feed on small arthropods, but they also eat the nutrient-rich sap from the acacia trees that are found in these dry woodlands that they inhabit. This species is oviparous and lays clutches of two eggs at a time. They do face threats from habitat degradation and invasive predators such as foxes, cats and pigs in this area, but we still found them to be quite abundant in these conditions. Just missed a snake off the road there, off this side. Wasn't quite fast enough, but I saw from the car he was moving and he was near the edge, so... Yeah, I lost that one unfortunately. Didn't look very big, who knows what it was. But keep cruising. As luck would have it as well, it's one place where the grass does get too thick to follow anything through. Whereas we've just been cruising through miles where it's been open on the side of the road and I've still been able to find it, but never mind. Back in the trusty X Trail. Next snake on the road is this pretty large spotted python. You always have to, when you see a big python out the window around these parts, you do always have to uh, slip yourself hoping it's a woma because that would be the rare python that we could find here. But these are more abundant. We've seen plenty of these before. This is a pretty big one. Put a hand there for comparison. That's a relatively large adult spotted python. I even thought when I saw him on the road, it, it just looked like a quite a big snake in the torchlight, that it might even have been a mulga snake. But upon closer inspection, upon walking a bit closer, I could instantly tell it was a python and uh, something spotted at that. So let's just take this one off the road because we've seen plenty of these and crack on. Look at this, this is funny. We've got another suited dwyer eye here hanging out with this green tree frog. Not a sight you see every day. Whoa. Slightly better view of this one as I've just popped him off the road. The night is fairly productive snake wise, but so hopefully we can uh, find one of our targets. But usually when you find the conditions are right for a snake like this and you find in a couple, it's a fair chance we might find a few more. This one sat quite well for photos, so I thought it was the best example to show a picture of out of the many individuals that we found. Definitely the most abundant snake of the night. These variable black naped snakes. This is the third one we've seen tonight. I'm not gonna mess around or stop him or anything. Just let him carry on his way. I did have a few gecko targets out here, so I was stopping for any geckos I saw on the roads, and this thick-tailed barking gecko was the next find. I couldn't actually find any records for this species out here, so it was a pretty interesting find and it had me scratching my head over the idea at first. This species is mainly nocturnal and feeds on insects. They've also been recorded aggregating together under safe cover over the heat of the day. Look what we've just found on the road guys. My first ever bearded dragon. I'm really stoked with that. But this is awesome. It's my first, it's always cool to see animals you, that you see back home. Obviously in the pet trade, in the wild. And I'm really stoked that I've been able to uh, find this one. Look at the yellow inside the mouth awesome animals proper iconic reptile real defensive postures on them it's turned into quite a lizardy night look at that look at that beard aptly named awesome this bit of dragon's gone into sort of just limp mode where they just sort of freeze almost play dead they don't play dead but they do just go completely limp and the predator lets him go and then any minute he's just going to suddenly spring into action and he's just going to vanish. But while he's sat limp, I'm taking the opportunity to grab a few photos. And then we'll carry on road cruising. Just going to leave this guy be now. And he'll move off in his own time. It's gone from quite snaky this night to fairly lizardy. But that is the first one of these iconic Australian reptiles I've seen so I'm pretty stoked. I'd love to Photograph one in the daytime and see one in the daytime, that'd be ace. But I'm sure we'll find one. Let's carry on. I can't really figure out how to get these pictures onto YouTube without compressing the quality of them, but at least these show the bearded dragon up close and with a better lighting than the footage has. Still finding stuff on the road, this time another Brigolo scaly foot. We're doing really well. Um, but I would just like a little bit more diversity. We're getting a lot of repeat finds, but I really shouldn't complain. It's been fairly productive. 
This is a rare one, guys. We've got a bandy bandy on the road. This is my second ever bandy bandy. I did find one up around Cairns, but they're a very cool species. They're in the vermicella genus. They really, they really do make me think crate. This one's got an injury on its, uh, up on its right flank there. Something's had a go at it. These snakes are pretty fossorial and they have fairly low detectability. They're quite widespread, but you don't often see them. Um, and the interesting thing about these is they eat exclusively blind snakes. That's all they'll eat. I'm just gonna uh, try and get this one sitting because this is probably not the best footage. There's a bit of a better view of it, guys. It's sitting a little better now. Hopefully that's not blown it out, but yeah, like I say, they are a front fang, a lapid, although they are known for not biting, but of course I won't be handling it despite, despite that. They eat like I was saying before, they only eat fossorial snakes. They've never been recorded eating anything else. Um, and they have been recorded turning their nose up at chemical scent trails from pretty much everything other than one species of blind snake. This one isn't actually doing it. I had one found one around Cairns. And this species exhibits a very interesting defensive behavior, which is called the defensive loop, which is where they vertically raise coils I'll put some pictures of it in here, which is very interesting and it's very unique to this genus. This one will be Vermicella annulata, I believe, the same as the one I found in Cairns. But as you get up in towards Cape York in far north Queensland, you start to get some other species. And that's really picked the night up. That's not a common snake. Uh, like I say, widespread but low detectability because they come out usually after rains, although I don't think we've had much rains around here. So we're pretty lucky to see that one. This one does have a fair few wounds. Something has had a bit of a go at that. That camera's probably not focusing very well, but something has uh, attempted to predate on this one. So we're just gonna let this one cruise off now. Hopefully that footage is all right and continue the road cruise because it's been pretty successful. I didn't manage to photograph this one as well as the individual from Cairns, but I hope the fact that it never exhibited that defensive hoot behavior means it wasn't overly disturbed or stressed as a result of a quick photo shoot. Either way, I left it off the road and continued cruising. I genuinely, for a second there, thought I had my Woma. But nope, it is this big old carpet python. And that, looking at the head, looks like a quite an old bruiser. It's in a bit of life, this one. Quite a big snake. But uh, I can't help be a little bit disappointed. Really nice markings actually with the horizontal stripe down the flank. I was just on the way home. I think this is going to be the last pass because uh, it's about half two now. And I'm pretty knackered. But another species for the night. Just stretched out. I'm realising just the size of this snake. Put a hand next to it. That's probably... A seven to eight foot carpet python. That's a big one. Just a quick view while it's off the road. That is a big old carpet. I'm still finding snakes, but I'm gonna have to head back now because I'm falling asleep. I've since learned these horizontal stripes down this python are one of the morphological traits of this particular locality, the McDowell Eye subspecies. On the way home, just had this brown tree snake which has a meal in it, if you can see that. Not one of the uh, night tiger morphs, so I'm not going to photograph it or anything, but... Ooh. Another species for the night. It's been a very productive night, but we've managed to find everything but the targets. But try again tomorrow night. That brown tree snake wrapped up a very hectic night cruise, but it got a lot better on the second night. So I'd urge you to keep an eye out for that upload next week where we tick off some of the region's major targets.